so, but I will explain in the, in the presentation. Uh, during the pre project pitches, I really liked the discussion about the uh, light pollution. Uh, I, we tried to look for some data with Katie. Uh, thanks to her, I know what like marble is, but uh, okay, uh, we didn't find anything, just that the NASA is trying to get something at the beginning of next year. So maybe then it will be it will be easier to get uh, satellite data regarding the light pollution. But uh, I decided to to model something uh, about light pollution from the data which we have. I tried to use the Copernicus Land Service uh, European elevation model, and uh, as uh, sources of lights, uh, I used the uh, buildings from OpenStreetMaps. Uh, from that, uh, those buildings, I uh, filtered out the buildings which, or excluded buildings which are not really uh, used th during the night, usually. Uh, so they are not the sources of light pollution. And uh, try to um, process the data to, to get some, some, some outputs. Uh, so the processing looked like uh, I took the OSM building layer, prepared the, the I cropped the area because uh, first I tried to to uh, work on Onda server, which would be perfect, but somehow I didn't manage to run the Python script on it, and uh, and I have also problem with, with the data, so I had to switch to my uh, desktop and <laughs> work work there in uh, Quantum GIS. And uh, so I had to prepare the data, crop, crop them, um, so filter the data, and then uh, I used uh, use the first script to, to define the light sources. Uh, I defined the light sources with really some uh, some basic uh, attributes like uh, height over the terrain, which is uh, I used two meters because uh, I. Thought that uh, that's probably the height of the of the window on, on the one floor building, and then uh, I uh, checked the information in the earth curvature. How far does uh, such a light uh, shine? It's around five kilometers. If you are two meter high, you are able to see on the plane around five kilometers around you. So uh, I decided to uh, model. Uh, the light, uh, light uh, um, distance to 10 kilometers to have safe uh, safe buffer and also if the if the uh, light source is on the hill it can shine down to a longer distance so I, I chose the 10 kilometers and uh, then the atmospheric refraction uh, which was uh, uh, which the script uh, provided as default value I didn't um, consider the atmospheric refraction uh, because I don't have any data for it, so I use the default value. Uh, after after defining the those uh, attributes, I ran the script which uh, created the point layer with uh, with light sources, and then I ran it uh, with uh, as a visual um, in the visual analysis script uh, to uh, with the DM. Uh, European elevation model to get the output. So um, this is just the just the description of the of the earth curvature and uh, and the height of the of the light source. So uh, if you are at the at the h zero and you are two meter high, you you see the horizon in an, around five kilometers, and then um, if there is for example hill. Then this part is in the shade, and that other part is uh, is uh, lighted. So okay, so I get uh, these are the input data, which is basically the elevation model and the light source. I use uh, one valley in Slovakia around the town called Martin. It's way on two years, and uh, those are the buildings uh, in in that area. So the outcome was something like this. Uh, it's it looks really strange uh, because the actually uh, here in that area there are just a few few buildings and uh, they are uh, selected as pollutants, but uh, the, the values in that part which are which is lighted it are 
comparably so much higher that uh, in the in the presentation of the GIS it looks like this. When I put it in uh, 3D with uh, with uh, light sources, it looks like something like this. Uh, that big uh, area with many dots. There, there's the, that's the city of Martin, and the hills around it are uh, are lighted up. And it's without the light uh, light sources. And this uh, I reclassified those uh, those uh, uh, data to show exactly how how much it is. Uh, the problem with this data is that uh, around the city the values of uh, light, light pollution are very high. So you can see there is a lot of light uh, from, the, from the light. And uh, the light pollution in the mountains where there are much fewer buildings uh, is com comparably low. Uh, so the histogram of the, of the, uh, histogram of the picture looked like Sorry, uh, it seems that I forgot to put the Instagram inside. Okay, this are with the light sources. So the Instagram looked like uh, there are uh, really a lot of uh, a lot of areas, a lot of uh, pixels with relatively uh, low value, and there are uh, some of them uh, with really high value. Those are the those are the uh, Pixel or those other areas in the city, and uh, uh, the, the, those others uh, have comparatively la lower value. Uh, just to say, those whites are around twenty thousand; they have value around twenty thousand, and uh, those others have uh, those other uh, light blue and dark blue uh, have value around two hundred. So uh, it uh, really shows how. Uh, when there are um, not so not so many uh, light sources, that uh, the pollution is not so big. Okay, uh, this was some modeling of the light pollution, and possible uh, there are many possible future enhancements of this process. Uh, firstly, the better sources of local inputs, uh, the, the lighting pollutants, would be really important and interesting. For example, street lights. There are um, I think one of the most, uh, one of the biggest light pollutants uh, there are around us, uh, beside the buildings. But we uh, don't have any data in Slovakia about them. Um, then uh, other enhancement would be uh, differentiation between the height of the light sources, because uh, high buildings in towns uh, have much bigger impact. On the on the light pollution than the low um, suburban buildings, uh, then it would be interesting to cross uh, cross it with the Sentinel two data for the land cover, because uh, for example in the in the woods uh, the lights uh, somehow really stops or is really uh, really uh, slowed down by uh, by the leaves by the by the tree cover. And uh, then, actually, the, the light pollution on, on the surface is not so big. And uh, then, uh, uh, <laughs> I call it the full-time and part-time uh, light pollution sources. Uh, it means, for me, uh, the buildings. Uh, the uh, standard homes have, uh, are lighted maybe until 12, until midnight. And then the rest of the nights are, are switched down. They are actually not the light pollutants anymore. So this would be interesting to, to uh, model. And then uh, it would be really perfect to be able to add the, the atmospheric fraction due to uh, weather, weather conditions. Because of fog, of rain, of uh, temperature differences, the atmospheric refraction changes. And it would be interesting to add some data about it. Uh, then the potential potential usage of those data uh, it's just what the what the speakers uh, or, the, or the projects is, uh, we're talking about nature protection I come from the field so that's important for me and then the tourism mainly the the sky observation or the wilderness hiking 
if you want to feel like you are in wilderness, you don't, you mustn't see any light. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is for light pollution. Uh, I'm sorry that those pictures are loading a bit slow. So, okay. Uh, the other thing that we tried is uh, basically to check the the changes in the vegetation in the in the um, cities. Uh, we used the central and true data. This those first two are just for the uh, illustration. Uh, they are data from the year 2016, and uh, we compare them with the data of 2018. We used the NDVI index uh, created in the ArcMap. Uh, those is the NDVI index for the 2016, then the NDVI created for 2018. Uh, there are some changes, I'm not sure if you did see them. For example, in this area seems that there is something, some build up. Uh, so uh, we used the uh, the difference uh, on, on those two pictures and those uh, which are most uh, uh, white or the, the, the lightest colors or the shades are the areas with the biggest biggest change. Uh, then we tried to, or the, my colleague tried to analyze something, how to differentiate between uh, different vegetation types like uh, grass and, and trees, uh, but we still didn't manage to get it. Okay. That's it. Uh, Thank you very much. Actually, we were quite impressed yesterday when we saw these uh, topics and uh, a lot of discussion was uh, taking place and we were a bit worried whether we are able to use something out of the Copernicus to actually uh, have this type of demonstrators and uh, it's really impressive to see the stretch now uh, in this kind of um, perception. So really, uh, from my side, thanks a lot uh, to all work done and uh, also some questions for the presenters and uh, members of the team. Yeah? I didn't get the connection between the first part and the second part. Uh, actually, there, are not, there is no connection. So oh, I yeah. understand you didn't get it. So it was in parallel. Yes, we, we need to work for in parallel. Actually, because, that, uh, I'm sorry, uh, both of us like something different, so we try to Maybe outer of the ideas was yes, the same. Outer so, of the ideas is the same. So, yeah. So Martin is here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, if no questions, uh, uh, then we go for the.